What's going on, everybody? January Flowers here, your favorite homegirl. And if you're seeing me, then you know it's time to get into some baddies Caribbean tea, honey. Yes. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you are new to the channel, welcome, boo. Yes. Like the video and tell me who your baddie was this episode. Share this video with the baddie you know. And subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on a video from your homegirl, January. Now, let's get into this tea. So, as the episode begins, we see the continuation of Bianca versus Sapphire. Now, ultimately, I'm going to go ahead and get this one in Sapphire. Even though Bianca did get her wig and did flush it down the toilet and urinated on the wig, too, I did see Sapphire connecting more. So, I am going to give this one to sapphire because i did see her connecting more than i did with bianca now after they separated them they managed to get sapphire and bianca to separate the girls went into the back room to talk to bianca ray and of course mariah Lynn and tzatziki were amongst the girls who went back there now side note to tzatziki i thought this was strange that she went and fished for sapphire's wig out of um bianca's urination samples i don't know what's going on with the girls this season but they have this blind allegiance with Sapphire. I don't know if she did their taxes for him. I don't know what happened. But from last season to this one, it's been a switcheroo or two. These girls are going off. She put her hand in urinated drenched waters to get um, Sapphire's wig out. And then when she realized what was in there, <laughs> Tzatziki dropped the wig back in. Now my thing is this. If you put your hand in the toilet, what do you expect to find? Y'all answer it exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Like, so how could you not think? You know what I'm saying? So we cut to Mariah, and Mariah Lynn goes out into the living room, right? She's talking to other, all the girls and stuff. She's talking about, yeah, because, you know, I'm cool with Sapphire and Bianca. I just came back from checking on with Bianca, and I'm trying to let her know that I'm cool with both of y'all. So Jayla asked Mariah, she was like, so you didn't know about her running out? Mariah was like, no, I didn't know she was going to do that. No, this is all so new to me. No, whole time I know Mariah lying. And I feel like Jayla knows she lying. I feel like more people feel like she lying. You lying, sis. This your closest homegirl on cast. And she didn't tell you she was going to run up on Sapphire for you. For what happened last season. You're lying, Jack. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason you lying, Jack, is because somebody let you get away with it before, boo. Don't let her get away with it this time, y'all. Please gather her. But as far as right now... Mariah has successfully duped the cast into believing that Bianca's running up and the reason Bianca's running up is for Mariah, but Mariah didn't know she was going to run. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's real confusing. Y'all see what I'm saying? Let's move on to a better situation. Mm -hmm. So after that situation, we meet three of the latest girls this season. We meet Dia, Slim 2, and Tinka. Dia, what I've gathered from her intro is that she is officially a Caribbean girl. You can tell from her accent. Slim 2 is a sequel. And I did see her post online saying she's the upgrade version of the original slim saying bigger is better because she has enhancements that the original slim doesn't have and I'm, I'm assuming up top and at the bottom mm -hmm. because she's way thicker than the original slim and then we have Tinka and Tinka is a personality piece she came in you know doing splits and things like that definitely showing personality now after we meet those girls two new ladies enter the arena and we meet Diamond Abadi and Gretchen now but before Gretchen enters the home, Meatball is having a conversation with the ladies and saying, what, what y'all know about any of these new girls? So all of them looking around like, I don't know, I don't know. So Meatball said, it's this girl named Gretchen online and she been popping it like that, right? She said she been popping it. So as soon as she come in, I'm going to pop her, right? So when Gretchen comes in, Meatball does stand firm and straight pop. Up. But it was a sneak attack because Gretchen didn't give me that she was fully prepared. Now, y'all got to keep up with me now because this part was a little fast paced, but I'm going to try to break it down. Because as soon as Diamond and Gretchen enter the party, everything happens. They basically want to beat these two ladies back off cast so we're gonna start with Gretchen versus now these fights are gonna be broken down because um it was a melee you know what I'm saying it was so many hands that touched her this recap we're gonna focus on the ladies who the brawls I was able to hold hone in them. you see what I'm saying we're gonna focus on that the first one Gretchen versus meatball I did put in my notes that 
it was giving me Ty energy. And the reason why I said Ty is because Gretchen looked like she was keeping up with Meatball. I did see Meatball slinging her and of course whacking her a few times. But when Gretchen was up firm, I did see her connecting. Now, I did say that. I did say Meatball has more visible hits. But I do think that was a good keep up. For her being snuck, I am going to say it's borderline Ty. Gretchen versus Meatball. Gretchen versus Jayla. Now, this one was intense and they went a few rounds. I did say I'm going to go ahead and get that one to Jayla, but Jayla did get bitten. And when she got bitten, that just kind of confirmed that Jayla was getting the best of Gretchen. Gretchen said she was in defense mode. Now, after, we're going to wait, pause for a moment. Because after the meatball brawl, this is how the brawl with Jayla even started. When um, they separated Meatball and Gretchen, Gretchen was like, yeah, get that out of here. Get that big out of here like that, right? So all the girls was like, oh my God, did she say the N-word? So of course, Aubrey's like, oh my God, she's a racist, pointing at her, calling her a racist. That's when Gretchen was like, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, trying to say it right. No one's hearing her. Jayla said, but you're not black, so don't say it like that. And that's when um, Gretchen was like, to one of the twins, she was like, and I don't give up to one of the twins yelling in their face. So Jayla being a show off, that's how is she swung and her and Gretchen got into it. Slim 2, we gonna talk about that cause she sneaks Gretchen, she snuck her all night. And to me, Slim 2 didn't get any points. I think Slim 2 and Dia were just trying to get into the mix of something because they were told to come in the house and stand on business, obviously. Um, Slim 2, not a good look. When you bopped her in there with everyone else, cool. But when you bopped her in the doorway, I felt like you were doing too much. You said you don't want to hear her apology. You said why are they even letting her talk? We can say the same for you, sis. She had a reason to talk. They literally just asked her a question. It's not looking good, sis. Now, Dia, I gotta bring you to the table, my good sis. Dia looks scared. Can we talk about it, Dia? Dia, are you scared, yes? Because Dia looks scared. I do think Dia only ran up because she was told to. That's what it's giving me. Dia ended up wiggless. Like, as far as Gretchen versus Slim 2, Mid, it was sneaking all the time. They really didn't get a fair one. Gretchen versus Dia. I'm gonna go ahead and say that was mid too because both of them swung, but Gretchen kind of snatched that wig about Dia. It wasn't really impressive, but I did respect that Gretchen stood ground and she tried to explain to them what was going on. Scotty to me was taking more control of that situation than Natalie was because Scotty was, was trying to understand where she was coming from and explain to her why the girls will never listen to her. Um, she told her to stop apologizing the girls won't hear it she said it's only two things these girls understand um either you're gonna leave it alone or we're gonna handle business right there she said stop apologizing they'll never hear it and um for a moment i almost agreed with scotty but i'm glad that gretchen kept trying to get her peace out because in this life if you don't speak up for yourself no one else will keep popping it gretch mm -hmm. So at the end of this, we basically get an understanding that Gretchen does not have any allies off of her saying the N-word. You know, she should have listened to the cast and stopped when they told her to stop to. You know what I'm saying? But she didn't. And like Slim said, this girl is really bull. She is. She said it again. She said it again and again and again. Gretch is bull. So if they want to keep handling her all season, Gretch, you know why. We get her rolling to Tink versus Diamond. And this one was intense. The battle of the thickums. So we got um, Tink in the house come on diamond ripped her wig off they got beef from the auditions they fought at the audition so we at least got continuity with diamond and tink okay so child they gearing up to go tink does this rush job and literally bink bink binks diamond out the front door so they out on a concrete going they managed to separate them tink like come on diamond like in the grass though so Tink make fun of Diamond for wanting to fight on the grass. Now I'm going to tell y'all something. This is how I know Tink Hood. I ain't going to hold y'all. It must be an East thing because that is how you tell the difference between a weak girl and a girl who not scared of much. Concrete, straight street, no shoes. That's what I'm talking about. Like, that is how you know, but, you know, what we reference to the county bounties are girls who more want to fight in grass or, you know, I can't make up my lashes, make sure you don't hit me on the side, girl. Like, some girls do try to get rules, but Diamond says she wanted to go on the grass, boom. 
So Diamond and Team go to the grass and they going at it like they really blowing, 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 rolling in the grass and stuff. And then Team jump up like I'm done, I'm done like that. And that's when Diamond was like, "Come on, we gotta go another round. Come on." Now I will say this: they kept up with each other, but the only reason I might say Tink a little bit more is because the way she beat it out the door and the reads. She was reading Diamond down. She went in the house, started dancing under Diamond's wig. Once again, she did the same thing to her at the audition. She did it to her twice, y'all. She got her again. She did it to her at the auditions. She got her again in the house. Tink was just gathering Diamond. You know what I'm saying? Diamond was trying to read her back about her skin tone. I mean, it is interesting because, you know, Tinkabella was a few different tones. Her face was the color of snow. Her arms were the color of caramel. And her feet were the color of tree bark. And that was three different tones. I said, Diamond, I, you know, it was like you had to notice it. When you looked at Sister Tink, that it was something going on with her skin. I do think Tink might be one of the girls who bleach. But unlike the Claremont twins, the, she didn't sit in a tub of Vada bleach. A vat of bleach in a tub she didn't sit in it she just took a hand rag of bleach and cleaned that face up because that's what the, her face was this color and her body was this color and her feet was this color so <laughs> They had together as a Tink, but you know, the thing about Tink is that Tink has a personality and she had the baddies laughing. She made to, she had to seeky crack a smile. You know what I'm saying? She was sliding on top of I'm um, Diamond Wig saying, I could teach you how to skate. You know what I'm talking about? Like this. Diamond was like, She's not a baddie, she's just a human clown, like that and stuff. But when Tink was doing her antics, I do have to say something. I don't know if it's because both of them are from Philly, but before the show started, people was flooding me out in the DMs with meatball content so I can know a little bit about the bowl. It didn't help. But one thing that I did peep are her antics. Yeah, I wanted to see past the antics, but I couldn't. But now, seeing Tinkerbell, I don't know if it's because they both feel it, but you know, I'm not going to give too much on her, but these new girls have to understand it's your homegirl. If I see any phony, fey, fey behavior, false personalities, I'm bringing it to the table. Because a lot of her antics was giving me Meatball, and Meatball did jump into one joke with her, because she was laying a wig on Meatball, and she was like, Me Meatball, how does this look on you? And Meatball was like... You know, posing like that. They was roasting Diamond. Diamond was like, Diamond was like, give me another round. Give me another round. That's when Natalie stood up and said, enough has become enough. She said, it's time for baddie pool time. And all the girls rushed to the pool, getting nude and naked. And that's actually where the episode ends. Now we get a glimpse at next week. It literally is. The whole episode is in the living room. Please run them likes up for your homegirl. I literally sat here and tried to entertain y'all. The living room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So now we get a glimpse at next week and I want to talk about this because the first person Zeus is so shady. The first person they show us next week is Biggie making a phone call. Mind you, Biggie was excluded from this whole episode. Please tell me somebody else peeped it. Please tell me somebody else peeped it. I feel like this is Zeus way of trying to punish her for getting the fans vote again from last week because the fans was not feeling Jayla. I feel like they want the fans to like certain baddies and when they don't they try to punish them. Biggie was cut from this whole episode to the point that it was a part where some of y'all might have heard but it was a part where Tzatziki was walking and Tzatziki was like oh I gotta go check on Biggie and the camera starts to follow her and cuts and then it starts following Scotty around like the whole half of the episode is just following Scotty I'm telling y'all I don't know I don't know if they're trying to punish her but I definitely peeped it that Biggie was cut out but Biggie spills tea because Biggie makes a phone call next week and she called Tommy telling me like what's going on and Biggie basically Basically letting it be known that the replacements brawling tonight outside on the sand. So Tommy, like these girls just mad. Who could be causing all this chaos? Tommy's trying to think of new ways to, you know, give the babies directions and we can come up with some activities and stuff. 
Biggie's letting it be known who the person is. So Tommy's coming down to handle Natalie, and we do see her actually gallop in on that horse, which I'm so happy for. Um, yes. And we also see that once we get to the beach scene, we see all the replacements coming down and all Natalie and the house girls coming down. Now, this part I thought was phony because Natalie going to yell to Callie, who's with the replacements. She said, I'm not going to let you in the house. And Callie's like, what you talking about? I ain't going to sneak you. I want a fair one. She said, I can't let you bully me like that. And that's when Meatball and them start running over as if that was the signal. Natalie, out of all these years on TV, you really think, child, that's because she see the way the fans are swayed. I swear, if nobody does a psychological course on this chick, I don't know who will. This girl is trying to get the sympathy vote because she see what the fans are for Biggie, right? This girl going to talk about, I'm not going to allow you to bully me all season. Callie said, I'm not going to sneak you. Run me my fair one. She want Natalie to swear to up and stand in front of her woman a woman but you talking about you can't bully me throughout the season get swept up i hope kelly find a way to get you my good sis because you're playing too much some way somehow scoop her up we also see j-o is getting into the mix meatball jelly beans um Callie is getting into it with jelly beans. I don't even know why they have beef. I think Natalie is telling them like if you want a spot in the house take her out. Take her out like that. I'm telling you it's all Natalie towards the end of the episode we see Tommy riding up on a horse and we know that next week is going to be Tommy versus Natalie which I'm looking forward to. She has to be stopped you know getting these girls to brawl. What you should do is just let all the girls live together amongst each other no matter what. You know if you you are the one who everyone wants to handle. Get beat every day. Run them views up. You know what I'm saying? Natalie is a businesswoman. Run them views up. You know what I'm talking about, me? So, I did want to give my overall thoughts before we head out. I did think it was petty. You know, I did think Zeus was kind of past this. And when I say past this, I mean setting it up as if it's going to be more than that. You know, what they did with episode one and two was giving, okay, it's a new direction. This episode, the whole scene in the living room definitely could have gave us something else out of all the new girls i have to say tink and diamond are the only ones that display get to know me personality tink i would definitely want to get to know diamond if i didn't know her i would definitely want to get to know even more everyone else lackluster tease it was no introduction it was nothing that would make me want to dig further you know what i'm saying once again this has been their intro mm -hmm. I'm glad Tommy is returning. I'm glad that we are having girls on a series that are not, you know, just automatically always going to agree with Natalie. Thank God, you know? And I have to say, Jayla, it sounds so familiar. At the end of the episode, we hear her yell at Gretchen's face, I will brawl you every day. Gretchen took a bite out of Jayla, rightfully so. Um, Aubrey was scared, talking about she thinks she's going to be Gretchen's next meal. <laughs> Aubrey. Gretchen doesn't consume plastic. So I think you're good, Seth. Now, as far as everything else, I said, Jayla, it sounds familiar. You just told Biggie you were going to brawl her every day for the scratch on your face. Now you're going to brawl Gretchen every day for saying the N-word. Jayla, it's giving see-through, sis. But you know what I'm saying? The fans are loving you for it. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Yes. But you guys let me know what you thought about this episode. Who stood out to you? If I had to say someone who stood grounds, I'm going to give it to Diamond. Even though I think Diamond, you know, could have done way better. I've seen her do way better, but they interrupt Diamond too much. Or now on this TV, they don't interrupt Diamond that much. She can sweep. Over here, they doing too much. And um, they have favorites. And it shows they let Jayla go a lot of rounds with that girl. And Jayla was handling her. Gretchen was not. Gretchen was walking around like a loose noodle in that house, y'all. I'm telling you, that girl wasn't time enough. She wasn't time enough. But one thing about her her spirit is bigger than her because she kept saying the one thing that was triggering all them people why wouldn't you stop sis 
act up. Big Gemini energy. She said, I'm going to act up all day. Uh-huh. I know what you keep saying it, but I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wouldn't have respected it either. Would I have swung on her? Absolutely not. I think that is extreme. But look at the show we're watching. At any rate, um, if Jayla's going to carry on these beefs all season, it's giving lackluster from me to her. But you guys let me know what you thought about it. Are you excited to see next week? Are you excited for Tom? Me salacious return let me know in that comment section below stay locked to the channel because i will keep you up to date with all the latest tea and remember this do the best you can with what you got and i will see you on my next video bye <laughs> oh lord have mercy